If you've ever read the label of dairy products in the supermarket, you'll notice things like pasteurized, homogenized, and you might have even noticed the color difference between certain types of dairy products like a deep yellow cheese versus a stark white cheese. And the pasteurization and homogenization process compromise the nutrients in milk. Pasteurization heats the milk, it can reduce the vitamin content, and the homogenization process shrinks the fat globules, contributing to things like leaky gut and making the form of casein protein, the type of protein that's in milk, more damaging to the gut and the intestines. It makes it something unnatural that we're not meant to consume. And that's even if the milk has nutrition in the first place. When you feed cattle grain and you take them off the pasture, the grasses that they naturally consume, you're losing the nutrients that the cows were getting from the grass. So this dairy that is pasteurized and homogenized might not have even had any significant amount of vitamins or minerals in the first place. I'm not going to really touch too much on the nutrient profile of dairy other than saying that it can be nutritionally complete depending on the quality of pasture. Dairy can have every single vitamin and mineral your body needs. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K2, the precursors to omega-3s. It has iodine. It has all the elements, all the minerals. Dairy literally has every single thing your body needs, whether it's milk, cheese, butter, cream. It has everything. The macronutrient ratio, maybe cream has more fat and less protein. That will vary the vitamin profile in favor of vitamin B12. The B vitamins are specific to protein. Uh, that would be the main nutrient difference, but all of the fat soluble vitamins, minerals, elements are contained in all dairy products. Granted, the animal was on quality pasture. There were several indigenous groups that subsisted largely off of dairy. Uh, one that I constantly reference is in Weston Price's book, The Swiss in the Lochental Valley. Uh, Weston Price was a dentist in the early 1900s who explored people that were still living off of the land. Uh, these people in Switzerland in this isolated valley got a large percentage of their calories from rye bread and cheese that was made during the summertime when the cows were on the nutrient-dense grasses. Uh, these Swiss people also drank milk and they ate the meat of the cattle, but they were in perfect health despite getting a very high percentage, probably 40 to 50% of their calories solely from dairy. Uh, the Maasai is a very famous tribe that subsisted largely off of dairy, and there are a lot of northern Indian groups of people now that consume a lot of dairy products, butter, ghee, yogurts, milks, and they are in excellent, excellent physical health. So we know dairy can be an important contributing factor to our health. It's just modern forms of dairy have lost their nutritional value. So we know modern dairy can be more inflammatory because of the homogenization process, changing the composition of the fat particles, and the pasteurization process also removes beneficial bacteria that are contained in the raw milk. Uh, when you have a pasteurized dairy product, the milk can go bad. Uh, if the dairy product is raw, it starts its natural fermentation process. Uh, if you guys are thinking, oh, well, where do I get raw dairy? I only have access to supermarket dairy. Is this okay? You can go to local farms. Realmilk.com is a great resource for this. Eatwild.com is also an incredible resource. Uh, usually this is a bit on the expensive side, but any quality food is expensive. And we're going to take a look at a couple different products today. So we have a comparison between milk, of course, uh, raw grass-fed milk and regular milk. Uh, we have some colostrum. Colostrum is from the first milking of the cow or the first few milkings of the cow. It contains special immunoglobins that are uh, help your immune system and the immune system of the animal. Uh, colostrum is also important in recovery. Uh, when they gave it to athletes, they recovered a bit better and their immune systems were stronger. Uh, we have a comparison between butter and then we have some cream on its own. Now, the A1 versus the A2 protein stuff, I'll touch on that in the video I'm going to do next week that goes more in depth. Uh, but this is all a combination of A1 and A2. Uh, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar, A1 casein and A2 casein depend on the breed of the cow. Uh, the, it has a slightly different amino acid structure and 
uh, people can have different tolerances to different versions of them. Uh, goat milk and sheep milk are naturally A2, but as I said, I'll touch on that next week. Now we see a very dramatic difference in color between these products that is a direct indicator of the quality. And not only is there a color difference, if we take a closer look at the milk, you'll notice there's a separation here and that's the cream rising to the top. That's because this milk has not been homogenized. This is also the reason that cow's milk is used more often for butter and cream. It's because sheep milk and goat milk is naturally homogenized. Uh, it requires a very special machine to separate the fat from the goat and the sheep milk where cow's milk, it, it's possible to do naturally. So direct indicator here, the raw milk is usually uh, beige in color and it can get a little more yellow, but the stark white color of the store-bought milk is a testament to its lack of nutrition. And on top of that, they tend to add nutrients to it. They tend to add artificial vitamin D, artificial vitamin A, yeah, see here, ingredients milk and vitamin D3. And sometimes they even add vitamin A palmitate, which can be very uh, dangerous for your liver function as well. Uh, the colostrum is a, a much bigger color difference. It's because of the nutrients contained in it. Uh, this is regular colostrum, uh, which is yellow. And this is the first colostrum. This is right when the cow gives birth. This is even darker yellow, if not one of the, the darkest colored things I have here. It's an indicator of the nutritional profile of the food. Here we have uh, some raw butter which is very yellowish in color. Uh, the, you know, those Swiss people in that valley used to literally light candles with this butter in the summertime because uh, they knew that the properties of the carotene and the butter were nutrition for them. You know, vitamins A, vitamins K2, vitamin E. And compared to the, the white supermarket butter, it's really insignificant. Now I have some Kerrygold here for you Kerrygold lovers. Uh, but as you can see, the farm butter is much darker. And one weird thing I've noticed is the surface of the Kerrygold tends to, to turn darker colored than the actual interior. So that's something else I would keep in mind. And the cream here also has a slightly beigey, almost yellowish color. Let's touch on the flavor as well as textural differences between these products. And when people talk about grain-fed versus grass-fed meat, a lot of them are actually in favor of grain-fed meat. The important thing to keep in mind in this regard is that nutrients as well as toxins are stored in the fat and that flavor in the grain fed fat is usually masked by the cooking and there's not too much fat in some grain fed steaks in the context of how much protein there is. But when you have these dairy products and they're largely comprised of fat and the fat is spread evenly throughout the entire product the taste difference becomes drastic. When you compare grain-fed fat to grass-fed fat, that's where it's an objective decision that the grass-fed tastes better. The same usually occurs with dairy. Almost everyone says that Kerrygold butter tastes so much better, but that's not the case with grain-fed meat. Just an interesting analogy there. Some of you guys may have heard me mention an allergy protocol a couple of weeks ago and I'm still working on that, so I'll get back to you guys on how that's going as I am allergic to milk, uh, but things are looking a little bit optimistic. The basics of that is introduce a very small amount of the dairy product over a period of time so your body adjusts to it, but as I said, I'll get back to you guys on that. So very stark color difference between the two milks. I'll, I'll try the store-bought milk first. It's very watery. You can definitely recognize the homogenized texture. And the flavor is very mild. It's almost tastes like calcium. It, it's kind of weird. Uh, there's not much flavor to it. So this is the raw milk. This is a completely different food, guys. This is unbelievable. It's creamy. It has a nice texture. It has a very full-bodied flavor. It's very complex. You could taste the grass, the hay, the cows were eating. World of a difference. I don't know if you guys can tell, but... At the bottom of the colostrum, there's also a pretty drastic cream separation. So let's try each of the colostrums. So this is the regular colostrum. This is probably like a couple of days to a week after the cow gave birth. Doesn't actually have a lot of flavor to it. 
Colostrum usually has a chalky texture to it. I'm noticing that here. All right, so this is the first colostrum, supposedly the most nutritious milking of the animal. Oh, man. Yeah, it's very, very pungent. Uh, not, not doesn't taste as pleasant as the milk. Oh, man. I can't even describe the flavor. It's like medicinal. Like you could taste that. It's almost like you could taste that this is, uh, there's something different about this. Definitely not as enjoyable as the milk, but something to consider to try out for your immune system function as well as muscular recovery. So overall, there's a huge difference in complexity between the store-bought milk and the other milk products. Uh, let's move on to the, uh, the cream. We'll just taste this real quick, just a little bit. The main reason I wanted to show you guys the cream is because the texture of, of this farm cream versus cream from the supermarket is, is so different. Cream from the supermarket, it's like, it's runny. It's like, it has a, a very unique taste that's specific to supermarket heavy cream. But if anything, the cream is the most significantly different product. All of these products are incredibly different when you go from raw to supermarket version but the cream might be the most astonishing difference in both texture and flavor. Oh my God. This is how you get fat. This is literally how you would get fat. And that's crazy. That's unbelievable. That's so good. Some of my favorite things to do with cream are put some honey in it, put a little bit of berries in it. Uh, truly, truly delicious. And uh, texture wise, it's much thicker than the store-bought cream. Uh, sometimes even it's like you could stand a spoon up in and it's like almost as thick as butter. The flavor, very complex. It has its own unique flavor that you've never really tasted before. And when you try it, it's like, oh, this is how dairy is supposed to taste. Again, another big color contrast for the butter. And I'm sure all of you guys have tasted regular supermarket butter. When I taste it, it reminds me of toast in a way. And Kerrygold tastes a little bit better. Uh, the supermarket butter has a very unique, like, buttery flavor to it. When you switch to Kerrygold, that buttery flavor is still there. It's just a little less prominent. And then there are other flavoral notes that make up for it. The farm butter is a different story. This, honestly, I'm not going to say it tastes better than Kerrygold because the butter is different. The butter is more like, you know, what you're used to and what you're accustomed to. The butter will taste of whatever pasture the animal was on. So when you taste raw farm butter, you might not actually like it as much as Kerrygold or even regular supermarket butter. This is because... Butter is usually accompanied with other things. Uh, what I recommend doing is eating it as you normally would with other foods and seeing how to gauge the difference there. But, you know, the nutritional difference between these two things is very significant. This has all the beneficial bacteria, all the vitamins, all the minerals. This, not so much. And the pricing, this is about, you know, seven to eight dollars. This is, you know, twelve to fifteen dollars. So the way I look at it is with all of these dairy products, would you rather spend, you know, $3 on a cheap gallon of milk or $10 on a nutritious gallon of milk? Uh, it doesn't make sense to spend money on something that isn't good for you, whereas you can actually invest more money, even though it might be three to four times as much, and actually have a nutritious product that will contribute to your health. To me, if someone asks me, oh, Frank, is Kerrygold okay to consume? Or if I don't have access to raw butter, my answer is, what other fats do you have access to? And if Kerrygold butter is the only fat you have access to, maybe clarify it because not only are these dairy products pasteurized and homogenized, uh, what happens is the fats sit on the shelf for months and months and months. Uh, they go rancid. It can become an inflammatory food. Just not good for you in general. In regards to storage, I do usually put these all in glass and... The butter can actually be frozen for a very long period of time. Weston Price actually did some studies indicating that butter 
retained its nutritional properties in a freezer for up to a year. And we didn't really talk about cheeses or these fermented dairy products, kefir, yogurt, and these products are higher in vitamin K2. So if you do have a high quality raw dairy source of a fermented product, you are getting additional vitamin K2 in addition to the other fat soluble vitamins that are normally contained in dairy. And those products can be easier to digest. Uh, some people do say that raw dairy contains the lactase enzyme. That's not actually true. Uh, sometimes they do add that strain of probiotic to certain yogurt cultures, but raw dairy does not naturally contain the lactase enzyme. Uh, that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you would like to support the channel, please check out some of the other videos that I'm going to link at the end here. Uh, recently, I did launch Frankie's Free Range Meat. Uh, we just added raw cheeses to the website. Some of the most famous cheeses in the world, guys. Parmigiano Reggiano, raw cow's milk cheese. We have some raw English cheddar. We have Gouda. We have Gruyere. Check out Frankie's PreRangeMeat.com if you want to pre-order some meat in addition to some raw cheeses to obtain nutrient density. If you guys do want to read more about the goal of the company, uh, bringing you guys high quality animal foods, uh, that's on the website as well. Again, Frankie's FreeRangeMeat.com. You guys enjoy the rest of the week.